Silicone additives. This is a quick tutorial, quick update to cover the basic use of our most popular silicone additives. And the names of some of these additives have changed, so be sure to pay close attention to that. Also, uh, this is by no means an exhaustive uh, list of all of our additives. We will be adding some new stuff in the near future, but these are the most popular products that can be used to modify a lot of our existing silicone formulas. Now to begin, we have silicone fluid. Now silicone fluid is exactly what the name states. This can be added to a lot of our silicone formulas to lower the viscosity. And it also will soften the silicone. We typically don't recommend this being used in more than about 10% uh, of the total mass of the material. You can add more than that, but uh, you will start to see some of those other physical properties being affected. But silicone fluid can be, again, added to both soften the material as well as lower the mixed viscosity. So those of you in a pinch where you don't have a vacuum chamber, you need to lower the viscosity of a silicone, this is a great way to do that. Now, thick so. Now, our thick so is a unique material in that it can be added to some of the silicone formulas to thicken these to a brushable paste. Now I say some silicone formulas, that's important because there are some silicone formulas like some of our skin cast silicones that do not respond to that thickener and some of those that will affect the tear strength. So be sure to always check the product page of the material you're using and make sure you're using compatible additives for that. Now moving right along, we have SAM32 silicone adhesive. Now this is a really interesting uh, silicone, one part silicone sealant that can be used for both uh, painting silicone. You can use this to break this down with the OSS, the odorless silicone solvent. And you can also use this to stick things together, different silicones together. But this is a fast setting, silicone sealant, just a one part material, comes in a little tube like a tube of toothpaste, and you can pigment this with our silicone pigments, and it can be used both to paint, cast silicone parts, as well as do minor repairs. Now, for coloring silicones, the best way to get a very realistic flesh tone for silicone dolls, masks, that sort of thing, is a combination of both our silicone pigments as well as flocking. So the silicone pigments come in the form of a, a thick liquid or a paste, and these must be mixed into silicone in order to cure. At, on their own, they are a pure silicone oil that will not dry. So real important, these are not paints by themselves. They must be mixed into a silicone or a, a silicone sealant like this in order to create a paint base but by themselves they will not dry. But the best way to get a realistic flesh tone or a realistic organic color is typically using the silicone pigments and the flocking colors in concert because uh, flocking is a very small little microfiber and when mixed into silicone uh, creates a very realistic organic look to the silicone. So at the end of this tutorial, I'm going to link to a silicone video where we just cover that, just so you can see how that works. But that is typically the use of flocking. And again, rarely is flocking used by itself. It's typically used in conjunction with silicone pigments. Now, one more thing. We have a lot more colors than this, but this is just a good cross-section of our most popular silicone colors. Now, next we have the SFP, silicone finishing powder. And unlike baby powder or cabosil or aerosil, this can be used to create a very realistic skin-like effect on cast silicone parts, especially silicone dolls. This is really popular with our silicone doll making customers. And this is actually a little micro powder, a uh, little polymer that uh, gives a very dry feel, but very realistic feel to silicone. It takes away some of that synthetic oily feel that you typically have with fresh cast silicones. Now, last but not least, we have OSS, not uh, Office of Strategic Services, but this is odorless silicone solvent. As the title states, this is odorless. This is a very safe silicone solvent that can be used 
uh, to thin cast silicones and also used to paint cast silicones when used in conjunction with the SAM32 or other one part silicone sealants. But again, always run a test. If you're not using the SAM32, make sure you do a test and see how that works. Now, because this is not as volatile as some of the other solvents used for that purpose, this dries slower. And this is in response to a lot of requests for a slow drying solvent for those of you taking a lot of time to paint your dolls, masks, etc. So OSS is a great way to, uh, to thin out silicone for painting and uh, other applications. You can also use this to shrink silicone, but just be warned when you're using this, because this is a, a, very, uh, a very friendly silicone solvent, this does not flash off very fast. So it takes a long time for this to evaporate out of the cast silicone. So there you have our silicone additives. And remember, we have more than this. This is a, a cross section of, again, the most popular silicone additives used for prosthetic work or silicone mask making and doll making, and of course, medical simulators.